Good morning, everybody, and welcome along to another free webinar with Feed Alpha. Today, I am joined by the Curly Marketer. So, good Hello. morning. Good morning. How are we? How are we? I am Very, uh, uh, No Curly, though, as you can see. But uh, hey, I'll explain that. <laughs> yeah, so that, was it. that was one of my, my main questions to ask you. Where did the name come from? Yeah, well, originally when I started, like I set up the Curly Marketer uh, about two years ago and um, I did have curly hair. Uh, I had grown it quite long. I was hoping I was going to get a call from Game of Thrones, you know, <laughs> be, the new, be like a, an extra with Jon Snow, but uh, I never got the call. And um, at this stage, it's sort of, I, had, I hadn't I had really set the, the name up because of my hair. It was very much because I kind of worked in marketing for about, you know, 20 plus years. And I suppose through all of my uh, involvements in various projects, I felt that, you know, marketing is never this sort of straight line. You never just go from A to Z on a project. There's lots of twists and turns and pivots. And I suppose, well, it's sort of a curly sort of approach that you sort of have to be able to be flexible. And uh, if some one thing doesn't work, you have to go a different direction. And I suppose that's where I felt was my concept around what marketing is and hence curly marketer. So Brilliant. I absolutely love it. Um, so you started two years ago. Um, tell us what it is that you do in your in your actual day to day job role. Yeah, well, uh, my main role is I kind of put myself out as a social and media manager or strategist. And essentially what I try and do is I try and work with small medium enterprises who just don't have the budget to go to a, a large agency, but know they should be on social media and uh, but just just like ourselves you know i'm work on my own and you still have to send out invoices and do crm with your clients um, and that takes a time and sometimes there isn't the time to be doing social media or beyond engaging on facebook or engaging on linkedin and that's where i kind of come in and i'll work with a client we'll set up a strategy and we'll agree the channels to be on and then i essentially become that company's social media voice from engaging with their clients, trying to build their profiles, and I suppose kind of build their business through social media as another tactic to, comp comp I suppose, complement what they're currently doing if they're doing any sort of marketing at all. Brilliant. Um, that's that's great. And I, I love that it become the voice of it because it is, sometimes it's, it's the most important thing. You can have all the strategy in the world, but if you don't understand the voice of that brand and you're able to portray it, it just won't work. Um, so yep. that's really cool. So the thing we wanted to talk to you about today was about um, how you create a strategy for blogs, because um, yes. a lot of people were very interested in some stuff we were doing recently around blogs. Just really quickly. Yes. Hi there, Emer. Thanks for joining us. Emer was on what was it, previously from. Hi, <laughs> So when you're thinking about your overall strategy and you start thinking about your blogging strategy, what are the main things that you should consider? Yeah, like I suppose with any sort of uh, strategy, and I have all my notes here to make sure I give your audience as much detail as possible. I think like any strategy is set your objectives first. There's no point just starting to write a blog, you know, willy nilly and having no real kind of fundamental reason or rationale as to why you're doing the blog in the first place. Um, you know, do you want to kind of create awareness? Is it a case of that you want to just start to build up, I suppose, the quality of content on your website from a Google ranking perspective? Uh, do you want the ability to be seen as a, a thought leader in your industry through the sharing of really good, valuable content by way of a blog? You know, like a blog, as I, as far as I consider, it's one element of your content marketing strategy, just like podcasts or, you know, videos, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's always a, is a first kind of step is, you know, be very, very clear within yourself and your team, if you have a bigger team, as to, well, what is the purpose? Why are we going to start a blog? And once you're very clear on that, then you start to drill down into, you know, the whole area of the objectives around it. You know, maybe, as we said, you were saying in your questions about, like, say, the smart objectives, you know, be very specific, you know. So I, I often find with clients when they're starting a blog, it is to kind of help them get onto that sort of uh, awareness building stage because either their audience don't know that they have a website or their audience don't even know that they offer certain services. So having a blog where you're answering kind of core critical pain points that your audience have is a fantastic way. And so that's a very specific tool. You want to create awareness about what you do. And I think a good example to share is that I noticed last year when we went through the, the GDPR scare, you know, everyone was at the GDPR meltdown. But if you ever noticed, you know, we all, we were all there suddenly, and certainly from me, and I'm sure like yourself and a lot of other social media managers leading businesses, we were all worried about, say, our cookie policies or 
Jesus, you know, what happens if someone has signed up to our email list? Do we have to send them an email to re-sign up? And I went looking online, and it was the companies that I would ordinarily never have visited their websites, but they were the people that had written blogs about us getting GDPR compliant. And they're the ones that I remembered and I went back to, and I'll bookmark those sites for other tips. So it's a really useful. So for them, it was about creating awareness that they're thought leaders when it comes to GDPR or privacy. Um, I think from a next stage is, you know, what are we going to blog about? Because once again, there's that eternal question. Okay, we have objectives, but wow, what are we going to talk about? What's our audience going to be interested in? I always kind of feel if you're a business, definitely a question you should be talking to is your customers. Because a lot of businesses I've talked to don't even know essentially why their customers may have done business with them at the start. You know, it is because their solutions answer that particular business's um issues that they have but is there other issues that a customer is having whether it may be it's getting paid on time uh, how to market their business how to be found etc uh, etc et so is there topics you could pull out that answers your customers issues at this moment in time if you have a sales team on the ground you know are the sales team talking to the customers are they getting feedback your customer service teams on the phone um there is also tools like Google Trends. If you have an idea, for example, that you want to talk about a particular topic, like for me, I'm trying to talk about social media for small to medium enterprises. So I might use a tool like Google Trends to use some kind of top line sort of keywords to see what sort of um, trends and search volume on those is. And I'll kind of tend to for myself because I know myself because of how big I am from a business perspective. There's no point in me trying to rank for social media. So I kind of tend to go down that long tail kind of keyword type piece where I'll try and use Google Trends. And even there's another tool um, that I have here called uh, Keywords Everywhere, which is a new one I've come across. It's actually a Google extension for Chrome. And what it does is it will give you other kind of search phrases that potentially you could use from a keyword that you put in. It'll give you all these other potential search phrases that your audience might be searching for. Um, another great tool that I wanted to mention to your audience is um, it is called Answer the Public, answerthepublic.com. Um, once again, this is a free tool. And if you put in any search term into that, it will throw back to you actual genuine search queries that people have searched online for. And once again, it's a great way to kind of suddenly kind of tap into um, what are people talking about. Um, just another tool, really, just to kind of cover off on this is BuzzSumo, um, which is a very popular one. Now, I, I always try when I'm doing my blog post myself, and this has always been a, a comment from some of my audience, is that they like to try and give them free or cheap tools. Now, BuzzSumo do have a free plan. Um, and what it allows you to do, as you know, is put in maybe a search term, and I'll bring you back maybe the 10 top pieces of content in relation to that. And once again, it just gives you an idea as to maybe a topic or a type of keyword that's getting lots of social shares and lots of engagement that maybe is of relevance to your audience. So I, I think, you know, what you blog about, I think, is kind of when, when you've narrowed that down and obviously looking at your own, what's going on in your industry, you know, is there any particular industry shifts that are going on that your product or your solution can tap into or maybe be the voice of that? The fact that it doesn't have a huge amount of search traction, I don't feel that's an issue because this is your opportunity to maybe start to be the one that talks about it as such uh, online through your blog. Um, there's a couple of tools then that I would tend to kind of use if I wanted to try and craft maybe a, a blog topic like a generator. And there's two that are quite useful. There's the, the HubSpot uh, topic generator where you put in maybe your chosen keyword and it will give you back a potential topic title um, that you may be able to use. Um, there's also another interesting one called uh, portent.com, which gives you some kind of very weird, funky, unusual type topics that take your keyword and they will generate kind of, I suppose, titles that you actually would never organically think of yourself. So definitely they're ones to, to check out. And you'll give me the link for that one afterwards, because that sounds yeah, like... Uh, yeah, I know it's a, it's a very interesting one. Um, I've tried it a few times, and it gives you some kind of wacky, weird sort of titles that um, will very much kind of create that sense of engagement for uh, someone that wants to read a blog, you know, so... 
Perfect. Uh, good morning to Helena and good morning to Jane as well. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us. So just Hello. really quickly, um, you know Helena, don't you? And Jane is one of the founders of Feed Alpha. So um, there you go. Um, so really quickly, when we're talking there about strategy and having smart objectives, um, let's say, for example, right, because we're talking about blogs. So if we were wanting to set up um, a blog and we come up with an idea for a blog should we then carry on all the other blogs there after it being in the same kind of um should it be a strategy that one will naturally lead into the other or is it okay to have them being quite different um like i think i always kind of believe that the audience reads your blog like i can only go on what i do myself like the audience that reads my blog kind of know the type of style how i write how i format my blog because I always kind of feel that a, a blog should both be structured nicely from a visual perspective. Like I will always kind of make sure, or try to make sure that my blog posts are kind of well laid out from say three line paragraphs. Um, there's a mixture of uh, imagery and I'll always have a video that I've done to complement the blog post embedded in with the blog. And I kind of feel that you will write the blog in the tone and set it for the audience that you're going after. And I kind of feel that you do need to keep a consistency on brand. Like if you're a fun type company, um, your brand is fun. You've got a, a sort of a, a product that is not stiff and starchy or kind of boring. You don't want to suddenly kind of be kind of writing something that's kind of cool and using sort of maybe the language that your audience uses to suddenly go to a um, stiff, starchy, structured sort of approach because you're not talking the tone of voice of the audience. Where I kind of like to try and write my blogs as if I'm literally talking to someone, you know. Um, and I kind of feel that's what gives. I use simple, try to use simple language. Um, and even just from the visual way I sign off, it, there's always a sense of consistency from my point of view. And, and I kind of feel that would be what I always feel is the way to go forward. Um, Something that a lot of people don't forget to do when they're doing their blogs is the whole um, element around internal linking back. Because, you know, when someone comes to read your blog, you should be kind of actively always trying to suggest another post that could be of similar type of topic that they can link from one blog back to another because it keeps them on your site. And they start to build up, I suppose, an understanding as to the type of content that you talk about. And I suppose it kind of leads to, you know, you're kind of leading them from, they've read this post, here's another one you might be interested in. Oh, I'm interested in that topic. And then they go to that, then they're led to somewhere else. And then they kind of sort of, you, you, they sort of got a feel, yeah, this is really good stuff. I'm gonna come back and come back. And I've seen that work for myself uh, since I started to implement it. Um, but something that I always do for myself is the whole area of, I suppose, I see my blog really as being, the, the master content piece that underpins all of my social activity for me, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, 100%, yeah. You know, um, you know, cause I would be, as I say to you, I'd, I'd be a big believer in the whole area of content repurposing um, because blogging is not easy. You know, um, it has got harder and harder because um, I think the one of the stats I read there recently was there's 2 million blog posts every day you know, which is quite incredible, you know, yeah. and and that's very tough and it puts off a lot of businesses, you know, why should I start blogging, you know, we're never, our stuff is never going to be seen. And it's very hard to try and justify, I can very much appreciate that. But I always say to people, listen, you know, there's going to be elements, for example, when you are promoting your blog, because you can write a lovely blog, you can ensure that, for example, the co-schedule headline analyzer tool is a great tool to craft a really strong headline. Um, you can make sure, obviously, you've got a keyword set. Like I always recommend to people, if you're using WordPress, make sure you have something like Yoast SEO, because it will, I'm not an SEO expert, but it will certainly guide you through getting your blog as SEO prepared as possible, um, making sure the blog is formatted correctly, you know, and looking at maybe agreeing the best type of post for your audience. Like I tend to favor like either the how-to or the list post they tend to be ones that work really, really well. And I tend to kind of stick with that format. So once again, my audience kind of sort of expects that either Philip is going to write about something that's going to give me an actionable tip that I can take away, or um, that there's going to be kind of five or 10 ways to do something. So I'll always get value from Philip's blog. Um, and I kind of always kind of feel that 
to make a blog, you're sort of using that, as I said, as this kind of masterpiece of content from which then you generate all of your tweets. You can create a video for it for your YouTube, but then embed it back into your blog. And um, you can create, if you're, if you like Pinterest, create a Pinterest board for your blog or from your blog linking to it. You know, uh, Instagram, you know, you can create an Instagram post, story, and IGTV from your blog. So all of those pieces, and even then turn your blog into a downloadable, like an ebook. Um, I always say to people, once you've published your blog, make sure that your customers um, or even emails and your subscribers tell those people that are interested in what you have to do, that you have something to say. And then um, how then, like, so that's exactly it. And I also, people should have a nice, one big, long piece of content that they then yeah. chop and change into so many other things. And once you have that one bit, you're good. Um, how do you promote your blog? Do you do um, any Facebook ads? Do you just put it on Twitter, LinkedIn? What's your favorite place to put it to get people over to your website? Yeah, um, I don't do any paid advertising whatsoever. Um, I've wanted to try and see if I can build it organically, and it seems to be working. Now it's slow process, and but because I went through a I went through a process, and I don't know if any of your audience or even yourselves have have experimented with this, but I went through a process particularly last year, where I made none of my content gated, as in I didn't put a sign-up form behind it, because I went through the sort of the um, the position that I wanted to build the Curly Marketer as a brand. So when someone just put into Google Curly Marketer that I would come up, mm -hmm. um, that seems to be working because um, you now I decided to change it just to try and once again maybe build a, an email list having gone through a whole purge from gdpr etc because i didn't want people just signing up just for the purpose of downloading an ebook and then never want to interact again um because unfortunately at times i would be a bit like that myself i'll see a piece of content, oh that sounds great and then i'll download and then i'll just forget about the the blog itself um but I kind of how I kind of essentially promote once I have written a blog post um, what I will do is I will immediately create a video from that blog and I'll sort of what I like to do is I like to upload the video first onto YouTube so I can embed it back into the blog. Then my next stage is I will email my subscribers the blog post that has the embedded video. And then I'll then what I'll do is I'll create a sort of a, a mini blog post, if that makes sense, as a LinkedIn update and embed natively the video I created. Because I've noticed that LinkedIn, to a certain extent for me anyway, has become almost like it's a mini blog within the channel. Um, because what I a few tricks that I've sort of learned with LinkedIn is that just like any of the channels, they hate anyone leaving their channel to go back to your website. And some of the tricks with LinkedIn that I have tested that seem to work is you might write your sort of your, your update, attach your video, share it, and then go back in as an edit and put in your bitly link to link back to your, your blog post. Okay. Um, so that's something to maybe test and to look at. Um, but I tend to kind of, you know, uh, I, I just feel for me, video has been a, a huge revelation for me because uh, People enjoy, seem to enjoy watching me talk and enjoy the style of video that I do, uh, which at times is a bit quirky, I suppose. You know, I try to be a bit of a comedian at times, I think, but, uh, and I don't know if it works. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I find that it, what it does is it allows the written content to become even more enriched when it combines with the video. Um, and then what I sort of will try and do then is, out of that blog post, I will share it as a tweet or create multiple tweets uh, and try and schedule it out over a, a period of time. And then kind of maybe on a monthly basis, do a an automatic tweet reshare of those. So there's a kind of an, an ongoing sort of re-promotion as such. Um, and then what I hope to do in some relevant blog points is create them as resources downloadables where the blog post is turned into an ebook and can be taken away, et cetera. So, um, so there is there is that sort of that element. And I kind of, I'll always kind of utilize where possible kind of tagging on the social media posts. If I've mentioned someone that uh, is relevant within or I feel is, will, will find the topic I'm talking about relevant, 
on LinkedIn, Twitter, I'll tag, and that helps you really get views and interaction and, and commentary, etc. Definitely. So Jane said the conversational tone is so much easier to read. I agree, uh, Jane. I'm not great at it though because when I start to write a blog and it's conversational, I will yeah. tend to ramble on on this long story about something else. So um, yeah, I yeah. stop myself there. And um, Barbara said, and um, they're good tips that you've just given there about um, promoting the blog post. And I do think so. There's some great ones there. Um, Really quick, how often do you think people should be blogging? So I've got some people I'm working with right now, and we've sat down and we've created a year-long plan. Okay, yeah. so we have 52 blogs, one a week. Um, yes. and different things that are happening throughout the year. Um, but then I have other clients who, obviously, when you say that to them, they absolutely panic and run in a different direction, and they're like, oh, my yes. God, what do you <laughs> how often do you think you should do it? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. I think it kind of leads into that kind of whole editorial calendar kind of piece. Um, because I think I think that ultimately for a business, you, the most critical thing with a blog is you have to be committed to it. Um, and this is where the editorial kind of, uh, kind of comes in. Because if you commit that you are going to blog once a week and you start blogging once a week and then suddenly you stop, mm -hmm. your audience are going to suddenly kind of lose faith and you will lose them and it'd be very difficult to get them back. So I always kind of say to people, listen, you have to be very, very, and this is back to your smart goals, the realism, you know, be realistic, you know, don't kind of say we're going to blog five times a week. If realistically you don't have the content or you don't have the resource internally, or you don't have someone like ourselves that can literally blog five times a week. I'm always kind of of the opinion, if you can blog once a week or blog once every two weeks, or blog even once a month. That's what you commit to, and you make sure that the content you're putting out is 100 100% quality, because I always kind of believe in this day and age, it's quality over quantity, because I have noticed very much as social, and I'm sure everyone watching has seen this with their own communities, people are a lot more social savvy than they were three, four, five years ago. Um, you could have written a blog post with any kind of, I suppose, nonsense to a certain extent, and it might have got seen. But for now, people are expecting, you know, I think this, the stats now, which I'm quite amazed at, is that the blog posts that seem to do what the best are somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 words. Um, Google likes that from a, uh, an SEO point, but people like that sort of in-depth. Um, and people are now kind of reviewing websites and reading content like blog posts to give themselves knowledge and they're going back and forward to a website before they make a finite decision. So I always kind of feel if if your business setup only allows you to blog twice a month, then okay, that's what you commit to and you do it excellently. And then if you find that doing twice a month is actually reaping real rewards, well then it allows you to take a step back and say, okay guys, you know, we're blogging twice a month, we're getting great reactions, we're actually getting some targeted leads coming to us. Let's push this up to maybe three times a month and we have to have a designated resource. And that would be always my my feeling is that don't feel you have to blog five or ten times a month because much better to start off with one a week or one a month and then build it up as you start to learn. Definitely, yeah. Sometimes you have people come to, to crazy kind of goals and then they kind of they do panic and it's the same Absolutely. thing. Because they write with your live every week and then everyone's expecting this live and then they, they don't appear. So um commit to what you can what you can actually reasonably do. I, I would, yeah. And I like I, I would always say this to people as well with the social media channels. You know, a, a lot of small businesses kind of get over overawed. Right, we have to be today Snapchat, Twitter, Pinterest, we need a YouTube channel, we need to be on Facebook. Ah, you know. And I always kind of say, listen. Take a deep breath and take a step back. You know, are, are your audience on Facebook? Eh, I don't think so. Well, are they on LinkedIn? Definitely. Are they on Twitter? Potentially. So let's start off with Twitter and LinkedIn and then start to introduce maybe other kind of elements. But I think you have to kind of crawl before you can walk. And once again, it's quality over quantity. You know, like I myself, I think I probably blog one to twice a month because for me, with my time schedule, that gives me the best time to ensure that what I'm putting out is is quality content and will actually give my audience those actionable tips. And so far, people are responding. They're liking what I'm putting out. If I tried to do five videos uh, a month and five pieces of content, I'd be cutting corners because I'm literally just trying to get the stuff out. And that will only damage my brand or any brand, I think. You know, so. Perfect. 
So um, talking about that, um, you have my different channels people use, and your favorite channels are LinkedIn and Instagram. Yeah, like I used to be, I used to love Twitter. Um, I started off uh, Twitter, and I suppose one thing that I would always kind of say to people on Twitter and right across all of the social channels is, I think 2019 is about being um, authentic, you know, being a real human, getting the engagement side. Um, Twitter has been a scourge with those horrible auto DMs. And as soon as someone sends me an auto DM, I suppose, uh, pardon the phrase, they're sort of dead to me, you know, because I'm kind of going, listen, you haven't even got the courtesy to kind of reach out and say, it's always to be connected. And I'd always say to anyone that's trying to go with their Twitter channel, or their LinkedIn is new followers, thank them with a personal tweet. Um, I would either do it two ways. I'll do a, either a, a GIF or I'll even do like um, a, a video just to say, listen, I guarantee it will cut right through the noise. Um, now I have found with Twitter as of late, I don't know if this is your experience or if it's any of the others watching this, if this is their experience, but I have noticed that Twitter at times, some of the, the dialogue on it has become quite political and aggressive and, it's a place where people want to argue and stuff. And now I tend to kind of ensure that I have my Twitter lists all set up yeah. where it's kind of social media sort of people. Um, but the main Twitter feed tends to be this kind of like, just like a, a constant political kind of uh, bashing <laughs> and stuff. And it can be quite an aggressive place. And um, LinkedIn has become my favorite channel to a certain extent from a business point because I feel that the relationships and the interactions, the conversations I've had on that channel have become very, very genuine. They're all professional. It's professional content I'm putting out. And I think it's really helped my brand as being someone who's in the social media space, trying to help SMEs with actionable kind of tips. And I kind of feel that in the main, the people that are active on LinkedIn are genuinely there to try and meet like-minded people and do some business. Um, Instagram, yeah, I've started to fall in love with Instagram. I can see the huge benefits uh, from, say, creating stories. Um, and that's something that I'm excited about for 2019 is the whole area of, I suppose, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, video, live videos like this. Um, because I think 2018, there was a huge amount of trust lost on social media. Um, I think it was Marketo did a big piece of research there last year where they saw was nearly 60% of people had um, lost trust, or didn't believe the messages they saw on social media. And I think that was down to all of the issues we had with, say, the Facebook analytica scandal. You had all of the, the bot issues on Twitter. Um, and I thought it was interesting there recently when Instagram, it was almost like the Instagram apocalypse, people waking up and they'd lost 500,000 followers, you know. Um, I just kind of find it funny that people suddenly kind of equate their popularity or that they are of a certain status by the number of followers that they have. Um, and I kind of feel that the key is on these channels, create engaged relationships and be active from a human perspective, share content that's going to be, that's going to give someone real help, benefit and action. But as people kind of engage with you, you should engage back with them. You know, I've started on Instagram to send a little, uh, I did a little kind of boomerang uh, thank you. Uh, and then followed with a little personalized message. And you'd be surprised how much it resonates. People come back and say, geez, no one's ever thanked me for, for following them on Instagram. Yeah, it's, it's, just these, over there. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's just one of these small things, you know. Um, I do think, as I mentioned before we came on air, I'm excited about potentially IGTV. Uh, it started off badly. I think they just they didn't put a lot of thought into it. Okay. But I'm excited by the fact that uh, when you're about to upload your IGT video, you can now share a one minute update uh, as a post. Um, so that's quite interesting. I think they've a bit to go. Uh, as I mentioned, the whole area of monetization, I think people want to see the ability to monetize. But I think more and more people are now starting to embrace IGTV. Um, I think once again, the whole, and I think the whole area of why stories has become so um, positive is that whole thing about, you know, brand authenticity, you know, that you're giving people a, a background, you know, look as to the people that are behind this big brand, you know, there you are sitting in your pajamas trying to do a last minute blog post. People can relate to that, you know, and it's not this sort of, you know, I think that, and I think that's what it all is, you know, like, um, I think, I think that's what brands and big companies all have to just kind of realize that that kind of, you know, the, the fundamental thing is social media is still a tactic. It's just another tactic to promote, communicate your message. 
But the core thing is, is that people want to develop a relationship with you as an individual or your team. Uh, it's that people will always do business with people. And that's why events like networking events and, you know, shaking hands with people and um, will never, ever die as such. But I do think for 2019, I think this whole omni-channel experience is going to be something that people have to embrace as in user experience. You know, people want to be able to interact, say, with me on my blog, watch me on YouTube, come to my uh, Twitter feed, maybe do a Facebook Live, and then suddenly meet me at a conference. The whole experience should be the same. Mm. I shouldn't be kind of one way when they meet me, as in, oh, Philip is so cool on his videos, and he's so nice in his blog, and then I met him, and he was a dick. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just um, that's not going to work. Your brand is your brand, you know, and what I give out, that's the way I am, you know, mm. and I write the way I am, and I talk, and I meet people the way I am, and either they like it or they don't, and that's fine, you know, so. Uh, Helena said about Twitter, people like to be controversial to get seen on Twitter. Um, I kind of agree with you there, Helena. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like you about the old handshaking and meeting people in uh, real life. Jane is brilliant at networking, unlike myself. Um, okay. Definitely, people respond to being relatable. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. And Helena says, not like the person such. And I agree. I'm very, very true to who I am in my business. Yeah. When people meet yeah. me. They know I'm a little bit odd, um, so that's out there. That's good for everybody. Else. Um, yeah. Really quick, you were talking about Instagram, and everyone lost all their followers, and it was all like panic stations. Just a really yeah. cool tool I use is Instagram Audit, and um, you can drop Very in anybody's um, username, and you can see how many followers are real, how many are fake, what their actual engagement is, and what it should be. So. Um, Sometimes a lot of people come to me saying, oh, this influencer wants to work with me. And I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Tap, tap, tap. Not going to happen. So um, it's, a really, it's a really good tool to use if you guys are thinking about, you know, maybe you're not getting engagement you need. Or maybe you're thinking mm. of working with someone who's a nano influencer or a mega influencer. Um, so check out. I'll drop the link in later on for you guys. Um, yeah, brilliant. So that's a good one. So the kind of last thing I wanted to ask you about was podcast because i i'm obsessed with podcasts and ebooks right now so what is yeah. your top podcast for small to medium businesses yeah like i used to listen to a lot of podcasts when i used to work in my previous job i'd stick them on in the car and um i'd listen to them i'll be honest with you i i haven't listened to podcasts as much as i used to now i did take a note of three that i always found from a social media perspective and from a business perspective that people would all get really good value from. Um, the first one was uh, the Entrepreneur uh, GSD. Uh, GSD uh, was an acronym for Get Shit Done. <laughs> and um, it's with a guy called Mike uh, uh, Kuula. Uh, that's K-A-W-U-L-A and Sheena White. And talks about lots of different products, uh, um, topics like entrepreneur, um, entrepreneurism, social media, business tips. And, you know, it's just, it's a very refreshing podcast. There's no kind of bull. It's kind of, uh, I always kind of took away some, what I think is key, actionable tips and little things that you could try pretty much today. So that's always a good one. Um, then another one, which is the marketing companion, uh, which is Mark Schaefer. And Tom Webster, uh, Mark Schaefer, for those who are in Twitter, he did the the whole kind of a content shock book, which kind of went viral there a couple of years ago, where he felt is content marketing dead. And he's a very well known social media speaker. But once again, it's a very lively, fun, engaging podcast that I think anyone would get real benefit from. Um, and the third one, which is very well known, but I've always gone back to it. It's always stood me really, really well. Was uh, the Social Media Examiner podcast, Michael Stelzner. Yeah, yeah. Um, great podcast uh, again uh, for just for social media and just to kind of I suppose keep you abreast of what's going on in the uh, um, I suppose in the trends really um, so there were sort of three that I kind of felt I would be happy to kind of give because they're always ones I always went back to you know so, uh, Brilliant. so yeah Cool. So that is absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to pull so much from this. And um, you actually have an ebook on creating the perfect strategy for blogging. So um, if we drop that link in below, people can yeah. head and download that. It's absolutely. Yeah. 
for a read. I read it myself um, and I really enjoyed it. It was very good. Um, Pretty good. Nice. Nice and easy, simple, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's simple. Um, yeah. Perfect. Oh, Barbara says um, she can confirm that it's a nice person and definitely not a star, star, star. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> um, so that is absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. And um, I know you are looking at trialing out Feed Alpha for Oz. And since you mentioned yep. Zumo, um, it's kind of like that only better as far as I'm concerned because it's got loads and loads of trending stuff that's happening and stuff that's coming out right now well, we can have a chat about that later and um, have a good look at it together yeah great cool so everybody thank you so much for joining if you have any other questions about blogging or that do let us know and um we will um we will answer them below have a good day cool thanks very much take care bye-bye <laughs>